We are at war, and ventilators are our ammunition. Ventilators are the most important tool we have. I need you to understand ventilators literally mean life or death for some of our COVID-19 patients who are just struggling to breathe. The ventilator's there for them. They can stay alive. Our doctors, our nurses can help them through. If it's not there, it's over. We are gonna work every day to get ventilators where they're needed because this is the single most important piece of the equation when it comes to the frontline medicine we're providing to those in need. Yesterday, we shipped out 1,400 ventilators, 1,400 ventilators shipped yesterday all over the city to hospitals that need them. But we're gonna need a lot more. This is literally gonna be a matter of they come in and they go out immediately to where they're needed most. Urgency, that's the name of the game when it comes to getting ventilators in and getting them where they need to be. Everyone is being asked to help. All levels of government, the private sector, charities, anybody who can get a ventilator, we need it now. And we need to get it to the front line to our doctors, our nurses, who are fighting every day for us. If anybody knows a way to get us ventilators, if you can donate a ventilator or any other crucially needed medical supplies, please call immediately, 833-NYC-0040, or go online at nyc.gov. We need your help, and we need it now. Thank you very much. Now, we've got questions that have come in again today. They're excellent questions. The first is Salma from Brooklyn, who says, why hasn't the city implemented mandatory home deliveries of food products? It seems like grocery stores and supermarkets are places most likely to spread the virus when people are touching surfaces and food products. It's a great question, and Salma, look, we need to figure out how to get food to people who need it. We're gonna have a lot of people can't afford food because their source of income is gone suddenly. Uh, we're working for on the idea of a much bigger food distribution for this city. But here's the challenge, 8.6 million people uh, in the middle of a pandemic, it's very hard to imagine a delivery system that can reach all of us. But it's a good idea, and I certainly want us to use it more for seniors and for folks who can't get out of their home and for folks who are really, really struggling. We need to expand that capacity and get a lot more food in the hands of people who need it. So to the extent we can keep building a delivery structure, we're going to. But you know, right now, the important thing uh, is to focus on those who need it the most for delivery, and then for everyone else to be smart about the rules. The social distancing at the grocery stores, uh, calling 311 if you see ever a situation where a grocery store is too full, uh, the NYPD or other agencies will come over immediately to clear it out. If you see a line for a grocery store that's too tightly packed, we need everyone six feet apart. Call 311 and report anything like that. We've also asked grocery stores, supermarkets to do early hours explicitly for seniors to come and shop so they can have a special time that's just for them and will help avoid crowding 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. for any grocery store, any supermarket can do that. That would make a huge difference. Colleen from Washington Heights. Colleen has a really simple, important question. She says, is it safe for ourselves and for others to ride bikes outside for exercise once a day? Colleen, uh, in fact, more and more New Yorkers are using their bikes uh, for exercise or even among our essential workers to get to work. And it's a great option, uh, and we know that people need some exercise each day, but the rules are pretty clear. First of all, avoid packing together. I I've been out in parks and I've seen some bicyclists who are being really smart about keeping distance, others that get a little too close. Look, when you're on a bike, you're, you're you know, exercising, sometimes you're breathing heavily, Remember, this is a disease that's transmitted by droplets, by what comes out of your mouth. So if you're biking, that's great. Get only the exercise you need, get back home after, but keep distance from other bicyclists while you do it. Be smart about that. Uh, family members who together live under the same roof, of course, uh, can keep closer together. They're already all together the whole day long. But for an individual who goes out to bike, let's keep that distance, let's be smart about it. Uh, definitely, though, uh, we know that biking is a good form of exercise if you do it the right way. And as with everything you're doing, if you go outside, when you get back, wash your hands right afterwards. It's just a smart precaution. And then Eric asks a question that's on my mind and on the mind of parents 
all over the city. He says, is there any possibility of school opening on April 20th? Eric, uh, here's the blunt truth. Possibility, yes. Likelihood, no. Uh, it pains me to say it, and I've been talking to the school's chancellor about it. We're not there yet. We're going to watch carefully. We're going to hope and pray that somehow uh, this crisis ends uh, much quicker than we feared. But Eric, the truth is, with the projections we're seeing, it's going to be very, very difficult to imagine school coming back by April 20th. And if it doesn't come back by a certain point not long after that, obviously, tragically, we would lose the whole school year. What is happening as an alternative uh, is online learning, distance learning for our students. And any student who needs to tap into that distance learning can call 311. Any family can call 311 and find out how to do that right away. Kids can continue their education. Seniors who are looking forward to graduating, super priority to make sure they graduate on time. Call 311 if you need information or if you need a device uh, to, to be able to plug into online learning or if you need access to internet service. Whatever you need, we want to help every student to keep their education going even in this difficult crisis. So everyone, thank you for these excellent questions. Keep them coming. Use hashtag AskMyMayor, and I'll be back with you tomorrow. Thank you.